All processes that attract a payment will have a system-generated invoice or invoices as well as the accepted payment channels to be used. As such, you should not make any additional payments to facilitate the processing of your application. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the tutorial for Transfer of Joint Interest from LRA 36. The Transfer of Joint Interest is the process of conveying ownership rights of a property from joint owners to another individual or entity. For starters, you'll open your browser of choice and type rdsasa.lands.go.ke. Once you land on the login page, key in your Ardisasa ID or national ID number as well as your password and then click continue. Upon doing so, you will be provided with a one-time password code OTP which will be sent to the phone number you used to register with on the platform. Once you have received the OTP, type the code onto the OTP prompt box and click login. You will then be navigated to the dashboard where you will find a number of services listed under the departments we have in the State Department of Lands and Physical Planning. The account you are logged in with is your private account. For you to initiate this process, you will need to switch to your Advocate account. So go ahead and click on the profile icon. It will display a drop-down menu with the professional account which has been approved for you as an advocate. For more information on how to upgrade a professional account, check out our YouTube video through the link featured in the video description. On the landing page, navigate to the land registration section and click on view more. Here, you'll find various land registration services. Click on transfer and the transfer process we are applying for is the transfer of joint interest from LRA 36. So go ahead and click on it. You will be directed to the applications page. And here, there are a number of tabs provided. We have five tabs, namely pending, ongoing, completed, rejected, and cancelled. All applications that you have initiated as an advocate will be listed among the tabs provided, depending on the level of processing of your application. The pending tab is for the applications that you have initiated but have not completed. They still need some action from your side or from the parties involved in the transfer of joint interest application. The ongoing tab features applications which you have made but it's up to the ministry's side through the relevant officials to work on it. The completed tab is for applications which you have completed and have been validated by the relevant ministry officials. The rejected tab is for applications that have been rejected by the ministry officials for one reason or another. Reasons for rejection will be communicated to the applicant. And the cancel tab is for applications which have been cancelled by the different parties involved in the application process. For you to initiate this application, you will click on the new application button on the top right hand corner. Please note that if you have not switched roles, the new application button will be unavailable. You will then be navigated to a page with FAQs, which is the frequently asked questions, specific to the transfer of joint interest. You can go ahead and explore the FAQ to get an understanding of this application. Take a look at who the actors are, what the requirements are, the payments and documents needed for this application. An important part of the FAQ section is the payment required, which is only the stamp duty payment. At no point will the advocate or the proprietors be asked for any other payment whatsoever. If satisfied, click on Next. The next section is the proprietorship details. Here, you'll first be required to fill in the parcel details. Go ahead and enter the parcel number in the format registry forward slash block and then the block number with no space in between forward slash the parcel number. The next part is the transferer details, where you are required to enter the RDSSA ID of the transferer. Since this is a transfer of joint interest, there is more than one transferer. Once you have entered the RDSSA ID, click on search. A pop-up box will appear requiring you to select the category of person to execute as the transferer. It can either be the transferer executing on his or her own behalf or an attorney executing on behalf of the transferer. If you choose the attorney option, you will key in the power of attorney entry number in the format registry forward slash the entry number forward slash month of registration forward slash year and then click on search and the power of attorney entry number will be listed underneath the search bar along with his or her RDSSA ID. If the RDSSA ID does not feature, it means the attorney has not transacted on RDSSA and thus you will be required to enter the RDSSA ID of said attorney and click on save. 
For the purpose of this tutorial, we will choose the Self option and then click on the Save button. Upon doing so, the name of the transfer will be listed below and the name of the person executing on behalf of the transfer will be listed on the right. A key thing to note is that if you wish to change the transfer you picked for one reason or another, you can click on the Remove button and you can then enter the correct Ardisasa ID of the transfer. You will then proceed to enter the Ardisasa ID of the second transfer and upon doing so, the name of the transfer will be listed below. The name of the person executing on behalf of the transferer will be listed on the right. The next part is the transferee details. First, you will be required to choose the holding type which can either be sole, joint proprietorship or proprietorship in common. In case of joint proprietorship or proprietorship in common, all transferees should be added. In our case, the transferee's holding type is sole. So proceed to enter the Ardisasa ID of the transferee and click on search. The details of the transferee will be displayed below and the name of the person executing on behalf of the transferee will be listed on the right. If satisfied, click on Next. You will be navigated to the Transfer Details page. First, you will choose the currency for the consideration amount and proceed to enter the amount. For currency other than the Kenyan shilling, a current exchange rate will be required for the purpose of the assessment of stamp duty. The next part is the pickup person details. This is the person to pick up the title after the transfer has taken place. So proceed to enter the Ardisasa ID of the individual. Then click search. And the details of the person will be listed below. We then proceed to the law firm details, where you will need to provide the details of the law firm that you are acting under. Here, you have the option of tying the application to a registered law firm on Ardisasa where you will be required to type in add this as ID of the law firm and then click on search. And the law firm details will automatically be populated. However, in our case, you will be manually keying in the law firm details. To begin with, enter the name of the law firm. Also provide the physical address of the law firm. Provide the postal address of the law firm. You'll enter the phone number of the law firm and you'll also enter the email address of the law firm. As far as the website as well as the street address of the law firm are concerned, they are not mandatory fields to fill. If you have any additional provisions that the transfer is subject to, you can add them in the text box provided under the additional provisions and click Add. We'll then proceed to the valuation details part where you need to select the status of the land. It can either be developed or undeveloped. If you choose the develop option, you need to fill in the type of development and in our case, the parcel we are transferring is developed and the type of development is offices. As is featured in the FAQ section, one of the requirements needed to facilitate this application process to fruition is the stamp duty payment. Therefore, the next part is stamp duty details where you can apply for exemption of stamp duty or not. If you apply for exemption of stamp duty, you are required to select the section or legal notice under which the exemption is sought. It can be section 17, another section, or legal notices. If you have any other additional details specific to the stamp duty payment, you can add them in the text box provided. If satisfied, you can then go ahead and click on Next. And you'll be navigated to the Documents page, where you'll upload the required documents. As you can see, there are two documents to upload, the disposal consent and the adjudication of stamp duty. A key thing to note, is that the document should be in either the format .pdf, .png, or .jpeg. It is important to note that where a spousal consent is not applicable, an affidavit of marriage should be uploaded where the transferers or transferrer is an individual. So go ahead and click on the Choose File button to upload a scanned copy of the spousal consent from your local machine or device, and the document will be listed against the Choose File button. You'll then upload a scanned copy of the adjudication of stamp duty and the document will be listed against the Choose File button. If you have any additional documents which you feel will support this process, you have the option of providing those documents on the Additional Documents link. An example of an additional document is the CR12, in case a company is among the parties in the transaction. If you are satisfied with the documents you have submitted to facilitate the application process, you can proceed and click on Next. The last step is the confirmation step with all the details that you have provided. So scroll through the entire page and go through the details. If satisfied, 
you can go ahead and click on submit. You also have the option of going back if you need to edit any information. For this case, we will proceed and click on submit. Upon doing so, you will be prompted to approve on whether you indeed want to submit the request and then proceed and click yes. You will then get a confirmation message on a pop-up box which affirms that the application has been submitted successfully and then proceed and click on close. At this point, the transferrer and the transferee will all get a notification on SMS as well as on email communicating that the transfer process has been initiated. Subsequently, the advocate will also be notified to execute on the application with a signature and also confirm representation of some or all of the parties listed. A key thing to note is that you can view the progress level of your application on the progress bar as is featured on the upper section of your screen upon submission of your application. As mentioned earlier, the advocate was notified to confirm the application to represent the parties listed. As such, the next thing is application verification, which is for the advocate to accept or reject representation for the parties involved. So go ahead on the execution section and click on accept for the parties they represent. Upon doing so, you'll be prompted to approve on whether you want to represent the party, so proceed and click on Accept, and all the parties involved will be notified that the advocate has accepted to represent him or her in the transfer. The last part is the Add Signature section, where he or she will be required to append their signature. There are a number of options on how to append your signature. To begin with, there's this signing area here, as you can see, which allows you to sign with your computer mouse if you are using a desktop or a laptop, and alternatively with a stylus pen or your index finger if you are using a phone or tablet to access the platform. You also have the option of signing with another device. When you click on this option, a pop-up box will appear displaying four alternative options for signing. For more information on the available signing option on Altisasa, kindly view our YouTube tutorial explaining the same through the link featured in the video description. In this case, the advocate will sign on the signing area. He or she will place the cursor on the blank space, press and hold the left click button and then go ahead and append the signature. If satisfied, he or she can click on save. However, if not pleased with it, there is the option of removing it by clicking on clear and then appending the signature once again to their liking. If satisfied with it, he or she will click on save. There is a pop-up notification that will appear requiring you to affirm that you want to submit this as your signature. Click on yes and the signature status will change to signed. It is key to note that the advocate must be in communication with the parties involved throughout the verification process for ease of operations. The application verification section shows the parties involved haven't verified the application. As such, once the transfer has logged in, he or she will navigate to the notification tab on the left side of the screen and check for the notification prompting him or her to verify the application. An OTP prompt box will be displayed with a Get OTP button alongside it. It is important to note that below the OTP prompt box is a disclaimer for the party verifying. It instructs him or her to only enter the OTP code. If he or she authorizes the application made on his or her behalf by the advocate involved in the process, the parties involved can change the advocate if they wish so. So if the individual is aware of the process and approves it, he or she will then click on the Get OTP button and an OTP code will be sent to their phone number. After receiving the OTP code, the individual will then key in the exact code received onto the OTP prompt box and click on the Verify button. Upon doing so, pop-up box will appear, affirming that the OTP has been successfully verified, so he or she will go ahead and click on Close. Below the OTP verification section is the Add Signature section, where he or she will be required to append the signature. So proceed to append your signature, and if satisfied, click on Save, and affirm your signature by clicking Yes. This application verification process is the same for the second proprietor. Therefore, repeat the same process, and by doing so, the transferers will have completed the application by consenting to the application. The remaining party that hasn't verified the application is the transferee. The navigation process to verify the application is the same as that of the transferrer as shown earlier. Therefore, if the individual is aware of the process and approves it, he or she will then click on the Get OTP button and an OTP code will be sent to the phone number that he or she used during registration. 
After receiving the OTP code, the individual will then key in the exact code received onto the OTP prompt box and click on the Verify button. Lastly is the Add Signature section where the individual will be required to append their signature. So proceed to append your signature and affirm your signature. And by doing so, the transferee has completed the application by consenting to the application. In drawing things to a close, the remaining part is to surrender the current title. So once the advocate has logged in, a ticket and an invite will have automatically be created by the system in order to enable you to surrender the title. So go ahead and navigate to My Appointments tab on the left panel of your screen. You'll see an invite that has been created. Click on View and you'll be able to book the appointment on the calendar to your right. Select on the date and time that you'd like to surrender the title and then click on Submit. A pop-up will appear requiring you to confirm whether you want to set the appointment and then click on Yes. The invitation will then transition to the upcoming appointments tab. Click on the View button and you'll be able to generate a gate pass which you'll present at the gate when going to surrender the title. You also have the option of rescheduling. If the date you previously selected is not convenient to you, you can choose the new date and time, then click reschedule. For more information on ticketing and appointments in general, click the featured link in the video description to view our tutorial on it. Once the original title has been surrendered, the application will be forwarded to the collector of stamp duty for assessment. When the application is forwarded to the valuation department, the advocate should expect a call from the assigned valuer to assist with access to the site. The approval of a valuation task will generate an invoice of stamp duty payment. The instructions are detailed in the invoice. Upon payment of the stamp duty invoice, you can click on the confirm button. In case the payment does not automatically reflect, the confirm button will prompt a prompt box where the RDSASA invoice number and the PRN number will be required. On submission, the payment details will get verified against KRA. Once confirmed, the invoice will be marked as paid. After the stamp duty invoice has been confirmed as paid, the submit button, which is visible to the advocate, will be active and they can now submit the application for registration. An important thing to note is that if the parcel has any pending land rent payment, you will be required to clear the land rent first. So go ahead and click on the submit request button and you'll get a confirmation message, application submitted successfully, and then go ahead and click on close. Upon doing so, you'll notice that the status of the application will shift from pending to ongoing, meaning that your role as an advocate is accomplished, and it's now up to the ministry officials involved in the process to do their part in the process. When you click on view, you'll notice that the progress level of the application has advanced from the initial 40% to 60%. As the various ministry officials involved in this process work on it, you'll be able to view the progression of your application on the progress bar up until the final approval is done, and at that point, the progress level will be at 100%. Once your application has been fully approved by the ministry, all parties involved will be notified that the transfer process has been approved. That's it for this tutorial on transfer of joint interest on Adisasa. Feel free to give feedback on this tutorial in the comment section below. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell button to get notifications on new videos as and when we post them. Thanks for watching and goodbye.